Hi, this is Nick from graphicdesignemployment.com and this is a quick tutorial on just one of many methods of cutting out hair. This time I'm going to be using Fluid Mask, which is a standalone application that also doubles as a Photoshop plugin by Virtus. And the picture I've chosen is this one. The background is not hugely complicated, so um, what I'm going to do is go through um, how I would uh, go about extracting the uh, image of the girl and her hair from the background so that we can place it over another. So the first thing we're going to do is um, duplicate the background layer uh, and we're going to do that because Fluid Mask um, works destructively. It takes whatever layer it is that you're working on, applies the mask, then brings it back in. It doesn't actually give, put a mask on the layer, it actually gets rid of the background altogether and uh, we're going to want to do some tweaking in Photoshop later so we're going to keep uh, a copy of the layer that we're working with and work non-destructively. So after you've done that, go to Filter, Virtus Fluid Mask and open up the plugin. So here is the image open up in Fluid Mask. The first thing it does, uh, as you can see, is examines the image and it covers it in these um, vertices. So it's done its own version of the magic wand uh, on the image. And um, Fluid Mask is, is actually a replacement for um, the Photoshop Extract tool in earlier versions of Photoshop. So the first thing we're going to do is um, with broad strokes select the areas that we want to delete and separately select the areas we want to keep. And the quickest way to do this is to start over here on the left and you'll see there's a brush there called Delete Local Brush. So select that and just brush over the areas that you want to get rid of. Uh, you can s immediately see why it's handy working on um, an image that has a fairly plain background. If this was more complex there'd be a lot more work involved. Uh, so I'm just going to very roughly touch in the areas that I want to get rid of. In those areas you will see that there are hairs um, mixed in and uh, we're going to deal with that in a while. Um, initially we're just going to get some broad stroke fills in. Just take some of these out over here. It also helps um, if you have a tablet um, rather than a mouse or a trackpad. Uh, I certainly find that easier and that, that's what I'm using at the moment. The advantage of working with a tablet though is that as you can see uh, the harder you press the, the larger the brush size which will come in useful later. But you can manually change the size of the uh, brush using the sliders. So um, that's uh, it for the first pass. What I want to do now is fill the rest of the image, the image, the parts of the image we want to keep with um, the keep brush, which is green. But instead of doing that, I'm going to go to Image, Auto Fill with Keep. And that makes sure we don't miss any areas. Now, um, we may have missed a couple of little dots in the background. And to find out whether or not we did, we can uh, use the mask opacity slider here and we can turn off all those distracting edges by checking the show object edges box and then we can really easily see any areas that we've missed. Now there are some blobs here that uh, we've missed because they are mixing up with um, the hair so uh, I'm gonna just get rid of a couple of those just to demonstrate this tool. This is the delete exact brush. So if we select that you'll see it no longer behaves like a magic wand. It, ad it only deletes the areas that you actually brush over like this. Um, but otherwise I'm, I'm fairly happy with that selection. Got a couple down here I think we'll just brush over quickly. That'll do for now. Now around the edges you'll see You'll see there's a, a blue line that's been automatically placed and the blue 
on the image is um, the area that is going to be blended. So um, the next thing we're going to do is go over the areas where the hair really does blend in with the background with the uh, that blue tool which is called the Blend Exact brush and I'm going to brush over those areas now um, and it's worth zooming in and, and uh, taking a bit of time over this which is what I'm going to do now. I'm happy with the outline of the body against the background and the face. I'm just going to concentrate on the hair for now. And just slide this up and down so you can see where areas are, uh, really need work. And here you can see it's mistaking uh, the outer area of hair here with her neck. So I'm going to just blend that in there. I'm just going to go around and just with broad strokes again Wherever uh, the hair is blending in with the background, I'm just going to put a broad stroke over it. Slightly thinner ones over these. If you want to see how you're doing, just use the opacity slider there. And on the uh, eyelash here, I'm just going to zoom in and just use a slightly finer stroke there as well. Okay, so um, I'm fairly confident I've got all the uh, areas where the hair actually shows through, the background shows through the hair and it blends in. So what I'm going to do now is just before I, I do my first uh, cutout preview, I'm going to um, just go around um, the areas where I know that the hair is opaque, that you really can't see through it, because the more accurate you are at this stage, the better a first pass result you're going to get. So I'm going to select the um, Keep Exact brush, so that uh, only the areas I brush are going to be kept. And I'm just going to go as close as I can to the edge of the hair around here. Okay, now that's probably going to be opaque there. Let's keep that. Again, the, uh, the tablet really comes in handy here because you can really, with a single stroke, easily adjust the width of your brush. I'm not going to get too adventurous with some of these. I'm just going to do this to give um, the computer as much information about what kind of a cutout, what kind of a blend we're going to want from it. Okay, and once you're happy about that, um, the thing to do is to do the opposite and use the Delete Exact brush and go around the areas that you know are um, just background and not going to be kept. Again, it's good to get as close as possible. So I'm happy with that pass. So now I'm ready to uh, test out the first cut out preview and there are two well there's there are, there are two ways of, of previewing uh, one way is to use this camera here this little camera called uh, preview cutout I'll just quickly show you that on an area over here just to see how we're doing and if you drag it it'll just do a really quick cut out to show you how you're getting on as you can see it's, it's not doing too badly the background is going to be this nice tasteful green over here but it does help 
you to see how, how it's blending and it's not doing too badly but we can already see there's uh, an area here that needs work and you can see why it's because this green is encroaching over an area that really should be blended so if we blend that area and try that again that should improve and it does same problem we've got here so we're just gonna throw the blend tool over that Check that out again, and we can see that's really starting to improve. Okay, so I'm ready to do an overall cutout preview. To do that, we just click the Create Cutout button over here on the left. And there's the first cutout. You can change the background color if you want to see it on black or any other color. You can just select the color you want and click OK. So if you know roughly what kind of colour background it's going to go on or what the background's like, whether it's light, dark, you can you can uh, roughly match the hue and brightness um, at this stage. This is the time to do it. Now, uh, before we go any further, there are areas which um, predictably are going to need some work. So it's done a pretty good job here of blending these fine hairs. But uh, here we're in trouble, so we're going to fix that. Now at the top, you can see um, the original source image by clicking on this, the workspace here, and the cutout you just made here. Um, if you make a change in the workspace, like this, it won't automatically update the cutout. You actually have to press the cutout button again, and it will uh, make the change. So it's having trouble with this... Uh, Hair over here, so I'm going to zoom right in and see if it's going to let me keep it with a very small brush. What I'm going to do is, is brush over it in green, then just blend the very edges just so it knows to keep it. 